Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys the best import settings for 2D pixel art inside of Unity. So if you launched Unity for the first time, brought in some art assets, and tried dragging in sprites to the scene that are in low resolution pixel art, you may end up with a result like this. It ends up looking terrible by default. And that's just because we need to change the settings to more accurately reflect what Pixar is intended to do. So this is a sprite sheet that I brought in from this project. And you can see if I click on it, I haven't changed any of the import settings on it whatsoever. So the first and probably most important option to change for any Pixar you import to your game is the filter mode. So if you click on one of your sprite sheets, you come over here to the inspector window filter mode is down here close to the bottom by default you have it set to bilinear filtering but with pixel art you actually want that to be set to point no filter so when you do this it'll get rid of all of the blurring and your pixels should look crisp so let's go at it and apply that first so you can see the pixels are now much more clearly visible they're not blurred we do have another problem if we zoom in really closely which is that there's color distortion compared to the colors of the original sprite. So while the pixels might be rendering clearly, they're not displaying the correct color. That option can be changed here with compression. So you do not want to compress your pixel art, so change it from compression normal quality to none and hit apply. And now that's going to clear up all of the colors. So now it should be looking just as good as it was when you exported it from another program like Asaprite. Now there is another setting you may want to consider changing for your game if you're working with such low resolution files, such as 32 by 32 pixel art characters. Uh, and by that I mean width and height of the resolution here. I'll show you what I mean by toggling the grid on. So the default grid, so on the grid for Unity, going from here to here it represents one unit inside of game space. It's kind of an arbitrary unit. It doesn't specifically mean anything by itself. But you can see in the inspector when you import your sprites that they set the pixels per unit to be 100 by default, which means for a character to move one unit across, it would need to move 100 pixels. So that means, so there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, having pixels per unit 100 can mean that if you see a unit of something like 1.05, then you know that means 105 pixels. So I guess that's why they go with that by default. But if you're working with these low resolution games, then there's a good chance you're probably using eight by eight or 16 by 16 tiles to build your level out. So what you might want to consider for all the assets of your game, if all of them are going to work with these low resolutions, is to pick a multiple of two that fits your sprites nicely. So for 32 by 32 pixel characters, something like 16 pixels per unit might make sense, especially if your tiles are going to be using similar numbers as well. So when we hit apply, the characters will get much bigger because now a 32 by 32 pixel character represents two units in game space so it's going to fit the grid much more accurately so now if we were to move a character one unit to the left we would understand that as being 16 pixels here ultimately though this is just a personal preference type of thing uh, whether you want your characters to fit the grid as one or two units or to be within the base 100 pixels per unit where they will look small compared to the grid but you'd be able to understand one unit of the grid as being 100 pixels and every time you move a pixel that would be a hundredth of a unit. What I would say though is that if you're going to set this to a different value you probably want to be consistent with that across the game so that everything is working with the same scale. Now one last thing you do need to change for a sprite sheet like this when you have multiple sprites in one image file uh, that's what we'd call a sprite sheet so you can see about 10 frames of the animation here. But if you just drag on the entire sprite sheet, that's not going to be how you accurately want your character to render. You don't want to show all 10 or so frames at once. So the way you get around this is by changing sprite mode from single to multiple. So in multiple sprite mode, you have the option to cut up the image file, the PNG, into separate regions, which each represent one frame of your animation. So after you set it to multiple, open up the sprite editor, hit apply to change the setting for the sprite mode from single to multiple and any other changes you've already made. And then here you have the option to slice your character. So assuming the sprite sheet is nicely separated here by equal sized units, in this case 32 by 32 pixel units, then you can easily separate them by equal sizes by clicking on slice and going down from automatic to cell size if you know the exact size of each cell, which we do. So 32 by 32, you can hit slice, and now you see all of these frames are perfectly sliced with each other all the same size so when you create your animation it'll be easy to use this 
So the other option for separating them with equal sized squares would be to change the top type from grid by cell size to by cell count. So here you just need to count the number of rows and columns for your sprite sheet, assuming that they're equally separated. Columns go left to right, so we can just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and rows go top to bottom. We can obviously see there's only one row. So we have nine columns by one row, and now if we hit slice, we're going to get the same perfect separation for each of the frames of our sprite sheet animation. So now you can hit apply, uh, close that out. So now if we double click on the sprite object we put in the scene, we might see that the sprite is missing. Since it's no longer a single sprite, it's been separated into nine different ones. So I'm just going to bring in the first frame of this flying animation to fit the character. And now we have it properly rendering a single frame at a time. And then when you go to create your animation, which I guess I can do really quickly for you guys, we'll add an animator component here. I'll right click, create a animator controller, and I'll just call it flying AC here to control the animations and the states for the character. So let's put that in for the controller. Now I can hit control six to open up the animation window and we can create a animation for that character. So I'm just going to call this flying uh, dot anim, I guess. I'll move this window up here. And now we just bring in these sprite frames. And now we can just bring in these sprite frames to the animation window. I'll move the animation window down here again so we can have scene and animation at the same time. I'm going to change the samples to 20. So it's running in 20 frames per second for these frames. And now I can hit play. And now our animation is playing perfectly with proper 2D pixel art import settings for a Unity character. So once again, remember, filter mode set to point, compression set to none. If it's a sprite sheet and not a single frame sprite, set it to multiple and separate it. And if you're working with very low resolution pixel art, consider changing the pixels per unit for your game if it helps you to understand the size of your characters better than the default 100 pixels per unit. So that's pretty much it for the 2D import settings for your pixel art characters inside of a Unity game. I've been Chris. I hope this tutorial helped you guys out there, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.